We've got big lizards, we've got little lizards, we've got big snakes, we've got little snakes, we've got wild rescued lizards, we've got cute little frogs, we've got hairy tarantulas, all coming up in this Reptile Room Tour. Let's start with this little enclosure just here, obviously not the plant, we'll move that out of the way. Uh, in here, we have got, do, 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 see that dude just there? There's one there, and there's one all the way at the top there. There are white tree frogs. Now, when we did get these, because we got these off uh, Cheshire Reptile Rescue, they're a, they're a new addition. They are a fairly new addition. Um, we just thought, we, we asked everyone, what do you want them to be called? Because I'm stuck. I have no idea what to... I didn't know sexes, I didn't know anything like that. But throughout that video, I did say that Northern Exotics is on TikTok. I know that's bad. I'm a 34 year old man, I'm 34 in a few days, woo, oh, and I'm on TikTok. But yes, they're called Tick and Tock. And that's their enclosure. They're an Australian species, they're absolutely amazing. That's not their forever enclosure, because although they are really, really small and dead cute, I mean, they're only about this big now, they're gonna get to about this big. So they're even gonna be a bit too big for this enclosure just here. That's just an empty one that we've got to do up um, in the future. We might do that for baby morning geckos. We'll get onto them a bit later. But eventually, there'll be an enclosure this sort of size, sat either right next to that one or there. We'll put the dubia colony up there. I don't know. What do you think of this big rack unit? Anyway, off topic. They are tick and tock. Oh, look at him. Look at him. They're amazing. At the minute, they're just fed on fruit flies. And yeah, the thing that's getting me with these guys is, because how could I add heat UV lighting and keep the humidity nicely because the humidity for these guys should be between 50 and 60 percent so i have to mist it once every other day over the plants and the plants are absolutely thriving underneath this uv lighting uh, because we do have uv lighting up there there is a big thing with the uv light here this bulb is a 10 percent a 10.0 compact uv lighting uh there you go, just a compact UV light. And going through the mesh of the Exoterra, it gives the perfect UVI for a white tree frog. So those people that say they don't need UV lighting, they need a UVI between one and three. White tree frogs. Boop, 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 boop. So the Ferguson zone two. That, that bulb is designed for Ferguson zone three animals. It is designed for bearded dragons. So Ferguson zone three, uh, boof. Bearded dragons. There was a bearded dragon on the box. That's the Exoterra one. So it just goes to show the compact UV lights are useless. And how did I check that? Well, I've got one of these guys. These bad boys is a solar meter. It's a solar meter 6.5. You basically press the button on the front just there and it gives you a reading. So 0, 0.00 is the UVI in this place right now. Remembering these are Ferguson's own two animals. So we need a UVI between 1.1 and 3. So here we go without actually disturbing the frogs. Where are they? There's one in the middle there and there's one over the back. So that's the height that they are. Put the sensor about there. There you go, 1.8, 0 0.8, 1.7. Now up that back corner without trying to touch them, let's go for that. Uh, oh, there we go. Not a lot. So it's all because, now if we went right underneath the bulb itself, directly there, look at that. So to get the correct UVI for a bearded dragon, the bearded dragon is literally gonna have to be touching that lamp. I love my solar meter, can you tell? Uh, they're very expensive, they're around about $200, and they are linked in the description down below if you wanted to check them out. But from the white tree frogs, we've got a couple of little enclosures next to them. Let's check this one out, this is Wish. Let's see if we can find, there he is. Can you see Wish just there? Oh, did you see him scurry off then? Yes, oh, 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 oh. where's he going now? Where's he gone? Uh, right, so anyway, Wish is a wild stowaway. He's our latest reptile rescue. He is a Chinese house gecko. Quite frankly, that is what he is. So uh, we're feeding him, we're caring for him exactly how he is, but how did we get him? He came into Cheshire Reptile Rescue, they're linked in the description, go and follow them on Facebook. Uh, it's from uh, China. He came from China in a shipping container into Stoke-on-Trent in the UK. Cheshire Reptile Rescue got the phone call, can you take him? And then Greg down there messaged me, you're good at taking care of wild stowaways, do you want this challenge? Oof. I went down and done it. What did he mean by I'm really good at taking in wild stowaways? We've got another one. This one is Mushu. Just there. Can you see him? He's got a bit of shed on his tail at the moment. Ooh, boo, 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 boo. And that's how you know he's a wild guy because he is absolutely insane. He's a lunatic. An absolute lunatic. The joy with Cheshire Reptile Rescue, we they do um, 
decor and stuff as well so that's where we got that bowl from but all the plants and stuff are doing great in this enclosure the thing with the wild stowaway to make them thrive in captivity to quite simply make their environment as close to nature as possible we can't give them the wild habitat simply because everything is going to be different lighting's different heating's different uh, because they can follow the sun and go out like in the morning the sun's going to be over there so they can go out there to bask in the afternoon the sun's going to be out there the shadows are going to be different everything's going to be different even down to a food level we can only provide these the food that we can give them the, the food that we can get a hold of so i've had to try and transfer him over to that food as well we have fed him slightly alternative with like wax moths as well he's now on to mainly super worms i just chuck a couple in there and he goes absolutely crazy for them but how did he come to to us he came to us from tm reptiles follow them on instagram as well and um, they found him in a shipment of wood that come in from South Asia. And we got the phone call. Do you want to take on this challenge? The authorities say you either take him or we destroy him. But he's an absolute crazy, crazy animal. He really is. Don't get me wrong, he's not. He's, he's harmless. Do you know what I mean? He really is harmless. But he's just a bit, a bit loopy. I, oh, see. Fuddable. But... Yeah, he's got a bit of shed on his tail, but that's Mushu, our Calyx Versicolor. He's soon to get a really good upgrade into this. Ooh, full repti breeze. We've got a full background build of the sides, the backs, the bottom. It's going to have a, like a water basin in there as well. It's all live planted. We've got a load of logs there to add into it. We've got a few more logs there to add into it. We've got our lighting. That's the uh, the Reptile Systems Eco T5 unit. It's going to be absolutely amazing. That's our build project for February. Because if you didn't know, we like to do a load of different build projects on this uh, channel. If you want to see this one, click on the video directly above now. That's our curly hair tarantula. Every single big pr project that we do, we just like to put a video up about it. So uh, if you're new around here, make sure you do hit that subscribe button. But back up to these two enclosures, you saw there's another one over the back there. That's got uh, do, 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 do. baby morning geckos. Let's spin it around so we can see. There should, in theory, be three in here. So you've got your one just there. Uh, da, 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 da. And that's all I can find as we speak, right? Oh no, there's one on the back wall just down there. Uh, yeah, so I can only find two at the moment. But yeah, baby morning geckos. How did we get baby morning geckos? Well, that comes from there. What is this? This is my pride and joy at the moment. It's a little experiment thing I'm doing. It's a fully built, I mean, c proper custom built backgrounds, water features, misting systems, uh, fog systems, pond. It's got waterfall. It's got everything built inside it. And this is my morning gecko breeding facility. There's around about 10 morning geckos in here now. Um, only be I started off with four. I added a few more into there, but then they've started reproducing and I've seen babies popping up here, there and everywhere. Now I'm pretty good at spotting where they actually lay their eggs. And I thought they weren't really laying eggs. And then all of a sudden I saw a baby in there and I thought, hold on a second, where's that egg incubated? Where are they laying their eggs in here? And I still to this day can't figure out where they're actually laying the eggs. Uh, so I've just sort of left them to do their own thing. I pack it full of food, it's full of fruit flies, it's full of their pangea. It's got everything in there for the babies. I do tend to see quite a lot of the morning geckos around the bromeliad area, this area just here. Uh, they're all sort of tucked into the bromeliad. I think because of the humidity coming up from the water that's stored inside there. It's just absolutely amazing. But this project is upgrading slightly. I mean, you can see where you've got like all this colour. Well, that's all going to get covered off on the sides. The pond area at the bottom, I can't use the waterfall. Simply because I built it all, I put them in there, I let them get used to everything, and I was slowly turning everything on. So I'd slowly turn the lighting on, then I'd turn the misting system on, just to slowly get them used to all the different things. Went to turn the waterfall on, and oh no, they'd, they'd, already, they'd already laid eggs inside the waterfall. I didn't realise until I'd actually turned the waterfall on, and the water was running over the eggs, uh, but those eggs actually did hatch. So morning gecko eggs are water resistant by the sounds of things. So uh, I'm tempted to just block off the whole bottom of this enclosure and make it a land area only with like a big water area. Um, just, I'm, I'm thinking dart frogs. That's what I'm thinking. The only thing to deter me from the dart frog aspect of this is you can see how I've got all this light all the, all the way around. But down the bottom, there's hardly no light at all. Now, if I block it all off, 
down this side there will be a lot of light hitting the base over here there's a little piece of light that hits there so i'm gonna have to look into some form of different lighting to help light that bottom end of the enclosure but that's just a plan i'm playing around with i have recently just added a thunderstorm into this enclosure i noticed how they stopped breeding stopped their courting and stopped the chirping so I added a thunderstorm to see if it would spur them on, and it did. It worked perfectly fine. If you want to watch that video, I'll link it just up there. Next to the morning geckos, we're down here. We've got Charlie. Oh, oh, he pooed himself. What's up, mate? What's up? Charlie is a super pastel yellow belly royal python, and he's currently showing off why he's actually called Charlie. He's got a C on the back of his pass on his uh, pattern. But yeah. He's dead active all the time. Now, I don't know why he's, everyone says they're Royal Python or Bull Python just bulls up in the hide. He's always out and about, aren't you, Charlie? Aren't you, mate? Now, again, his setup is absolutely nothing special. Now, I apologise. The glass is dirty on all of our enclosures. That's solely because I'm really ill at the moment and I just can't keep up with the cleaning of the glass. It's not an important aspect at the moment. <coughs> oh, God. But... What's going to happen with him? Because he will be getting an upgrade. All the animals are going to really naturalistic setups. Well, when Mushu moves out of there into that Repsi breeze, this whole enclosure up here is going to get tarted up for this dude. You go and move up to a bigger enclosure, mate. It's going to be a little bit more arboreal. It's not going to be that exact setup because that's not viable for a Royal Python. It is viable for him up there. Now, where is Mushu? Where is he? Can we see Mushu actually? Where is he? There he is, he's on his little log just down there. What are you doing? What are you doing? So, Charlie will be moving up into there. It is going to be made a little bit more arboreal because they do like to climb. And, uh, hello mate. You're not so scared now, are you? I sat there wondering, right, because I'm on isolation at the moment because I've got COVID-19. So I thought, the animals must be bored as well. I'm going out of my mind, I really am. I just, I'm looking out the window like a lost puppy all the time and I'm wondering, is that what we're doing to our animals? So I gave him this stupid little plastic tube thing just to see if it would give him that little bit of mental enrichment, that thing that I'm lacking at the moment, thinking that they might be lacking it a lot more. He's loving it. That plastic tube is his best friend now. He's like over it, he's through it, he's in it, he's round it, he balls up in it, he just loves it. It's absolutely amazing. Something as simple as that, can massively enrich their lives now i imagine over a few weeks he's probably gonna get bored of it but for now he's loving it so he can play with it what do you guys do to add a little bit of enrichment into your animals enclosures i'd love to hear your thoughts on all this enrichment stuff and what you actually do stick it in the comment section down below over here diego hello mate you're gonna say hi to everybody you're gonna say hi to everybody that's diego he's a four or five maybe even a six year old bearded dragon now and yeah that's his enclosure most people don't think bearded dragons are semi arboreal you give them somewhere to climb and they absolutely love it he spends the majority of his time sat on different levels of that post just getting closer to the uv light i love the uv light in here it's got two lamps in it it's got a zone one uh, lamp and a zone three so it, i can repli replicate a sunrise a sunset and not just the normal light that they're naturally given, but also the higher midday UV lighting that they're naturally getting in the wild. So it's basically a full cycle from morning, the sunrise, to their normal lighting, to their slightly higher than normal UV lighting they'd naturally get in the wild, their normal lighting back down to a sunset. And you're loving it, aren't you, mate? That product is the uh, Reptile Systems 25 Luminaire. I'll leave a link in the description down below. Unfortunately, it is only UK at the moment. I think it's in Europe as well. You're loving it. Are oh, you loving it? <laughs> I'm loving it, loving it, loving it. But that's his enclosure anyway. I really need to tart this enclosure back up again because it's, what, four or five years old, this enclosure? That's basically it. It's got a solid basking spot, which is basically just a snake hide. And yeah, that is Diego, our bearded dragon. Above him, we've got the bit, uh, oh no, we can't say that word on YouTube, uh, Rosie, <laughs> a common boa constrictor. She's a bit assertive, a bit aggressive. You can see her just down there now. She's underneath her hide. And there's absolutely nothing special with her, to be fair. She will be getting an upgrade, but that's not until the end of the year, sort of time. Um, she's just a box. She was a rescue when we first got her. Not so much a rescue as in she was ill or she needed to be rescued. The ladies bought a baby boa constrictor for her kids and it nipped one of them. And that was it. She didn't want him. Nope. Not touching it. Not feeding it. Just leave it. Somebody can come and pick him up. So I did. 
Still got to go through the Savannah monitors enclosures and oh popcorn. What are you doing? What are you doing? We've got popcorn, the big Carlson Globe boa constrictor. We've also got this big enclosure to go through as well. But first, we've still got a few enclosures to run through in the reptile room. We've got that one down right down the bottom there. That's nothing special. That's our male uh, leopard gecko because we do have a little breeding program going on. Uh, he's just a male leopard gecko. Nothing special. He's got a bull tail. He was rescued quite a while ago. This enclosure just here is our curly hair tarantula enclosure. Basically, we wanted to make the best curly hair tarantula enclosure on YouTube. And I personally think we did it. Now, she did what she normally does every single time we put her in a new enclosure, which was get all of this substrate from inside her hide and block herself in. We had to dig it all out this morning just so we can get a nice photograph of it. Simply, we, we expected this to do quite well on YouTube, and it really didn't do too well at all, to be fair. So I don't know whether my fans are just not tarantula fans. I don't really know. But either way, I love this naturalistic Nicaraguan style enclosure for this tarantula. It's just absolutely beautiful. If you want to see a video on how I totally built this, because it's it's, it's supposed to be replicating a tree there with the tree roots coming down. There's one root there. There's another root there. And there's another root over the back corner with the live plants and everything else. If you want to see how I built this, because it was quite ingenious on the ways that I did do it, I'll leave a video card just up there. Click on that and it'll show you how I built it. But that's not the only tarantula we've got. We've got one in here. This is our salmon pink bird eating tarantula. I don't know why they call it a bird eating tarantula. I know it is known to have mice every now and then, but. Uh, oh, God, look at the big ghouly leg down there. Oh, yeah, basically, that's our salmon pink bird eater. Water dish down there, naturalistic setup, live planted. It's just absolutely nothing special i wish he'd come out of his hide now uh, but he's always out and about walking around so if he does come out a bit later i'll get some footage but then that one is empty all right now this tr Ooh, there we go wide angle lens this enclosure we got it from tm reptiles what are we going to do with this enclosure i actually think we're going to upgrade the salmon pink bird eater into this enclosure because it's not too tall which would be a great idea but then we've also got boof that enclosure just up there that's a 45 45 45 that one we've got some big plans now we have got a big millipede in there at the moment let's get up and have a look at it boof there it is just there yeah so we've got the big millipede there and it's just set up as a bog standard millipede enclosure it's nothing special it's a temporary setup while we sorted stuff out what are we going to do in there well what is in here i don't know if we're going to see anything that's in here at the moment anyway we've got 20 fruit beetle grubs growing in there at the moment why are they there they're next to the heat source they can have a bit of heat it'll just speed the process up a bit more 20 fruit beetle grubs they're these sun beetles so the yellow and black ones we're going to add them into there we're obviously going to do a full background build make it look really nice you know like we do with all of our enclosures and inside there we're going to have the millipede maybe a few other species of millipede in there we're going to have the fruit beetles in there and i'm tempted to let wish have a little play around in there too give that as a big enclosure for that chinese house gecko what do you guys think that would just be a great project inside there we're probably going to do another morning gecko or just set it up for a rescue of some description just make it nice and prepared ready for a rescue when a rescue does eventually come in this one just here Let's see if she's out. No, she's not out. Uh, a zebra tarantula, a Samani. That's basically what that is, a naturalistic setup. I could do with tart in that setup up a bit more. Uh, yeah, it's a bit uh, a bit low, shall we say. <laughs> uh, we've got that dubia, dubia breeding colony. If you want to learn how to breed dubias, we are, we, oh God, we've done mealworms, we've done superworms. We've got a full playlist of how to breed live food because that's the sort of videos we like to put out on this channel. Uh, so if you're interested, again, just make sure you subscribe. We've got all of our plants. Check this out. We're starting to grow our own vegetables so that we can basically be self-sustained on vegetables. We're self-sustained on live food because obviously we breed our own live food. But if we want a tortoise, we're going to have to do that. We have got Millie. Whoosh. This is our normal uh, female leopard gecko setup. It's a four foot enclosure. I'll try and find her. Oh, there she is. She's right under there. Her tail is all the way under there. Well, that's it. Yeah. So that's her tail anyway in the hot side. Um, it's all heated up with the infrared heat projector. 
by Mega Ray. It's got the Zone 1 Eco T5 unit by Reptile System. So it's fully UV lit, fully live planted, fully naturalistic. It's just a beautiful setup. But not only does it look nice, it's fully functional on a lighting level. Let me explain. The wavelengths of UV light will come down there. It will come into all the natural solid slate surfaces. It will get absorbed into the, into the surfaces and it will get re-deflected off it in a different wavelength. So your animal has got all the different wavelengths of naturalistic light that it would naturally get in the wild. Plus, all the live plants, they suck in all the bad air, give out all the good oxygen. Uh, all the live grasses, so they can scurry around and hide. She's got all of her different hot hiding spots all over this side. Again, we can move it all. That's one of her favourite hides underneath that slab just there. She's got another hide just underneath there. She's got all the way over here. She's got a hide under there. She's got a hide under there. And she's got the moist hide just there. The joy with that moist hide is it's fully accessible Boof, from here. There you go. Moist hide. So we also use that moist hide as an egg laying box. So uh, breeding season, we'll just drop the male straight in there with her. Uh, when she goes to lay her eggs, she'll go into that hole and we can get them from out of there. We are planning a full cladding sort of area all the way around the outside to make it like rock effect on the outside sort of thing. But yeah, that's our female leopard gecko, Millie. Oh, Hugo. How's it going, mate? Trouble. He heard me talking, so he come out of his burrow. Look at him. Hello, mate. You're going to say hi. He's in deep in shed at the moment, so he is growing nicely. He is a lot better. Because if you didn't know, Hugo actually got stolen. So uh, he's back. He's a little bit more handleable now. He's still not perfect. But, yeah, there's his setup. Anyway, I need to clear his water out because he did go to the toilet in there yesterday. Same reason as the the um, leopard gecko with all the natural rock work. Just absorbs all the UV light. Gives off a different wavelength of UV light, reabsorbs it into it, it just absorbs heat differently. We've got a couple of the um, Reptile Systems D3 basking bulbs, they're the 100 watt mercury vapor bulbs. He's got a full basking spot there, but he's also got a hide underneath that basking spot. And there's Hugo, our three year old Savannah Monitor. Hello mate, you coming to say hi to everyone? Directly above him, just there, we've got Popcorn. Where are you mate? There he is. Let's see if we can open the door, because... Ah. There's Popcorn. Popcorn is our Carl Sun Globe boa constrictor. Absolutely. He's, again, most people say the boa constrictor just stays in their hide all the time. Give them the right enclosure, the right humidity, the right lighting, bang. They're out all the time, aren't you, mate? Aren't you? You coming over to say hi to the camera? <laughs> he's again heated up with the mega ray infrared heat projector he's got a big enclosure loads of log work he's got buttermilk butter face and uh, that's basically everything about his enclosure he loves it he's always up and about he's always on the logs he's always doing normal boa constrictor behavior and he's become a lot more handleable now if you follow me on instagram or uh, northern exotics youtube facebook page you'll see i've uploaded loads of pictures lately of me holding him but that is the reptile room tour complete thanks for tuning in guys if you've enjoyed it hit the thumbs up button if you're new around here please consider subscribing